So a quick update on interest rates. I am getting the question increasingly, hey Renee, what would you do with your own money in this market? As you all know, I sell a very high number of variable rate mortgages. I'm a big believer in the flexibility that comes with a variable rate mortgage. But that being said, there is a lot of conflicting information. There's a lot of crazy information out in the market today. So I just want to do a little debrief on headlines that are out in the market. If I have sent this video to you, it's because we have had a conversation in the last couple of weeks about interest rates, about variable interest rates, about what you should be doing, okay? Most of this is going to be my opinion. I'm going to present lots of other people's opinions as well and then do a little recap at the end, okay? We're looking at about a five minute video. I'd ask you to follow right along to the end. So quick update on rates. If you have less than 20% down and you're switching your mortgage or buying a new house, you can obtain a fixed or variable rate right around that 4.6 number, okay? So that's with less than 20% down. That means you're paying default mortgage insurance. If you have more than 20% down, you're looking at a rate around five to five and a half, kind of landing somewhere in that probably five and a quarter range, both on a fixed and a variable side. If you're wanting to buy a rental, you're more at five and a half, probably to 5.65. There is a one year rental special going on right now at 4.69. I do like that rate and that program if you're looking at rentals. So make sure you bring that up with me if you are looking at rental properties, okay? So no default mortgage insurance. So where are rates going? Let's just quickly flip to the slide about the bond markets, okay? So the bond has moved up slightly over the last few days since the interest rate announcement back on September 7th to price in about another 50 to 75 basis points in increases until the end of the year. There's many economists out there that are thinking we're going to see another uh, tightening cycle in October and December and January, okay? Probably 25 basis points at each point. We're hearing that from TD, we're hearing that from Scotiabank. Uh, that's very much the overall thoughts of the market right now. Canada very much took the standpoint that they were going to front end load interest rate increases, okay? So there were two things going on there. One, they actively wanted to tackle inflation, but two, the Bank of Canada really wanted to fight entrenched inflation, okay? Entrenched inflation means that we just start accepting higher prices, that we start asking for higher wages, and that those new prices really just become entrenched or really, you know, mudded into our economy, okay? The Bank of Canada wanted to be out in front of that. And one of the things that they were really, really keen about doing was making sure that their reputation was serious. They wanted Canadians to know that they were willing to raise that overnight lending rate as much and as quickly as they needed to, to keep that entrenched inflation out of our economy. So that's what's been going on these past months. This morning, there are a number of headlines talking about the fact that the US inflation numbers came out massive. They were projected at 8.1, they came out at 8.3. Um, and there's a number of headlines that say, hey, is this going to affect our Canadian economy? There's a lot of economists, I think Desjardins put something out this morning saying, you know what? We actually feel that because of these US inflation numbers, that is going to have an impact on the Bank of Canada taking that target rate up over 4%. Now, what's going on in the States? What's the worry in the States? They're very much in a tornado of prices and wages. So prices are increasing as a result. Consumers are asking for higher wages at work. So companies are having to provide higher wages to those consumers. Service prices are going up. Everything is costing more money, right? The companies that supply goods like Walmart are dealing with having to increase prices because the trucking industry is asking for higher wages. As an example, the rail companies in the United States, there's many rail unions and there's two major rail un unions right now that haven't come to an agreement on higher wages. So we're looking at a 90,000 person rail union strike happening in the States in the coming months. This would put increased pressure on the trucking industry, on other transportation industries. So as those services increase their prices, then that means companies like Walmart or Home Depot, for example, have to increase their prices to consumers. So it's a really wild cycle. When we look at the historical data in the US, and there's much more historical data in the US than there is in Canada, so that's a really good point for us. 
the way that these wage price tornadoes are broken is with recession. So what that tells us is that in some ways, the US government may be pushing hard for a recession to break this price and wage cycle that is so detrimental to the consumers. So if we see this cycle take off in Canada with this increased wages and again increased prices, if we don't see that come under control, I would argue that the Canadian government also has access to the data in the States and they will work harder to push us towards recession. Certainly, that isn't where we want the economy to go, but at the same time, we, we want to get this inflation under control so that Canadians can have some more month-to-month -month cash flow. The next thing I want to speak about is that there was some interesting data that came out, it's actually via Edge Analytics, I'm gonna give a shout out there, that came out this week about Canadian employment. This is really important to know because all the headlines we're reading is, hey, Canada has a super tight labor market. I agree with that, and especially in Alberta, I think we're feeling that because the Alberta economy has been incredibly resilient through this kind of cooling off period. We're seeing a major cooling off in Ontario, a minor cooling off in BC, but Alberta has remained very strong. Our prices are still up, you know, 13% year over year, very healthy and very manageable. But one thing that's very interesting that came out of the Canadian employment data is that we actually saw unemployment jump from 4.9% to 5.4% this month. There's only five other times since 1976 that that has happened and so it's very significant. That's a huge jump in employment. A lot of that is coming from the construction industry in the major populated provinces like Ontario. There was 6% less of Canadians overall income spent on renovations over the last few months. So that means that that whole renovation industry is slowing down significantly. Canadians are being more careful with where they are spending their money. So what that's telling us is that the interest rate increases that have happened already are actually breaking some things in this Canadian market. So I think it's really important to watch data both from across the border as well as Canadian data specifically to understand that we are starting to see a turning of the tides. So if you had to ask me what am I doing with my own money, I will tell you that I have a very significant mortgage on my own home. That mortgage is a variable rate mortgage. It floats with the market and it will continue to float with the market. That doesn't mean it's right for everybody but it does mean that it's right for me. And I do feel that as we move into you know, the beginning of 2023, back end of 2023, 2024, we may see some rate corrections as rates start to move down uh, because we are in more of a recessionary cycle.